40 years ago today, on May 22, 1980, Namco officially debuted a game that would forever change the course of human history, Pac-Man. That's right, today, Mar uh, May 22nd, 2020, marks the 40th anniversary of Pac-Man. And m people from all over the world <clears throat> are celebrating, including yours truly. I love retro games, and so, of course, I love Pac-Man. Such a fantastic game that stands the test of time and is still one of the true all-time classics of video games. And, well... Of course, this, I have, of course, had to just celebrate this monumental anniversary, of course, by playing the game that started it all. But not just, like, any old version of Pac-Man, because, of course, as you know on the show, we don't take a look at games that people already know about, unless it's for, like, a special occasion. Or at least not, like, um, versions that people are familiar with. No. With this show, we like to go delve into the more underrated and obscure sort of games. People, games that people might have not even known it existed until they learn about him here. But everyone knows Pac-Man. So what are you going to do about that? Well, how about an obscure version of Pac-Man? And what better to go with than with the Neo Geo Pocket Color version of Pac-Man? Yeah, I'm pretty sure not many people, know, not many of you know about the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Well, you you probably know the Neo Geo, but for those who don't, the Neo Geo was a console made by SNK in 1990, and it was basically well, actually, it was hardware made by SNK. Um, it doubled at it was like there were two versions of the hardware. There was the hardware made for arcades, and hardware that was a home console made for the home. Basically. They allowed you to play the same games at home that you could in the arcades with the same graphics, the same sound, same gameplay, everything. And even the same controls because the controllers were joysticks. The Neo Geo was very expensive, but it was very well praised for many of its fantastic games. And well, basically, in the late 90s, uh, SNK wanted to compete with Nintendo in the home console market, so they made their own handheld called the Neo Geo Pocket, and then later released a color variant called the Neo Geo Pocket Color, which featured color graphics. Um, um, unfortunately for them, they weren't able to compete with Nintendo, because Nintendo's Game Boy had well dominated the portable market about 10 years earlier. But the Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color had a lot of fantastic games on it. Um, some of them were even ports of pre-existing Neo Geo games, but for the portable Neo Geo Pocket. And well... One of the amazing games, of course, is Pac-Man. So, for today, to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Pac-Man, I will be playing in the obscure, but very awesome, Neo Geo Pocket Color version of Pac-Man. Once again, I have my NES controller with me. Let's get us started, shall we? Iconic. I'm gonna basically I'm just gonna play one game with the scrolling and then I'm gonna do one full screen so that you guys get to see both aspects of the game. Yeah, in this version I love the sound when you when you get the ghosts. It just sounds so cool. And it's not a sound you hear in the other versions of the game. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with Pac-Man. You run around the maze, you eat the dots, and you try not to get killed like I just did. And of course, when things get tough, you eat one of the bigger dots, a power pellet. And then you just chase after the ghost, so just go along without any, di without any fear. Hey, 
Yeah. There we go. Extra life right off the bat after the first level. On to stage two with the strawberry. This is where things start to pick up speed and the ghosts start to get more aggressive. And of course, I I know a little opening pattern, so that's why I'm doing these moves the way I'm doing them. Yeah. Damn, I'm doing really good. Well, besides the part where I died earlier, but that that's just one little mistake. And I did get that extra life, so I should be good for a while. Strawberry. Let me take you down, cause we're going to Strawberry Fields. Nothing gets real, and nothing to get hung about. Strawberry Fields forever. Yeah, I, I'm a good singer. I do a little singing for you guys. You know, one thing I want, really want to... A video that I really want to do is a video of me singing a song. Um, I have a lot of ideas for songs that I can sing. Um, and I really want to do it. I just need to find the right day to do it because I need absolute silence. And I also need to make sure I have everything ready. And I also need to make sure I have the proper instrumental for the song so that I can sing it without, you know, the original vocals. Like, a couple songs I have in mind are, uh, Genghis Khan, uh, uh, Hero Story from Police Story, um, Flight of the Dragon and, uh, Midnight Rider from, uh, Armor of God, um, uh, and, uh, I wanna do, like, the Time Fighters theme song and the, uh, the song Take to the Sky from the English dub of Captain Harlock, but I can't find any sort of instrumental for either of those songs anywhere online. But I love those songs so much, and I want to sing them so bad, so if I'm ever able to find the instrumental, I'll try to sing for you guys, because... I, I love singing. I love it so much. Hell, I used to sing in a choir back in uh, elementary and middle school, but I stopped doing that because it wasn't in my best interest and I wanted to pursue other things. Of course, including my YouTube poops, which are now my main hobby, as well as my video game reviews and other things that I do, and well, I just died. <laughs> but I was doing pretty good there. But yeah, um... Uh, I still- I've always loved singing, and I still continue to love singing. Even after I quit doing choir, um, I still love singing all the time. If you live with me, or if you've ever been around me for at least five minutes, you know that I, I, I freaking love to sing. And I'll just randomly bout out whatever song I'm listening to, or whatever song that comes to my mind. Especially when I don't take my meds. Stage 3 complete. Stage 4. So, uh, hmm. I've been waiting for the 40th anniversary of Pac-Man for a long time, like, this is, an, a special anniversary like this only comes, like, every five or ten years, so it's like, you have to do something special for a day like this, because, you know, it's, it comes up, it doesn't come off very often, so you have to make it count, and... By golly, I'm trying to make it count right now. Damn it. I made a bad movement. And I'm down to my last life, and my hands are starting to sweat on the controller as I grip it tightly. I love that sound when, when you get the ghosts in this version. It's a song that you don't hear in any of the other versions, which makes it unique. And that's kind of why I chose this version to play for this special, momentous occasion. Yeah, 
Woohoo! On to stage five with the apple. The big apple. Shout out to all my New York viewers. Stay safe and stay at home. This one's for New York. Ate the apple. Ah, uh, damn it, I shouldn't have... I don't like that I hesitated. But yeah, that's the uh, scrolling mode where the graphics are nice and big and beautiful. But you have you can't see the whole maze. Now we're gonna do uh, now we're gonna do the uh, full screen mode. Iconic. Yeah, all the graphics are squished, but you can see everything. It kind of reminds me of uh, Pengo for the the Sega Game Gear version of Pengo. Uh, because like. Because in the Sega Game Gear version of Pango, everything is like squished down, and Pango is has a really big sprite compared to everything else. But you can see everything, so you don't have to worry about a scrolling maze. Yeah, Pango, that's another game I gotta do on this because I love it so damn much. One of my favorite all-time Sega games. Back from bef back from the old days when Sega just made arcade games and there was no worries about new Sonic games coming out. It was just good old arcade games like Pengo and Flicky and Congo Bungo and Zaxxon and uh, Space Harrier and Hang On and Afterburner and Outrun and, and uh, Galaxy Force and uh, a few others that I might be forgetting. God damn it. He got me. Can't screw that up. You can't let that guy get you. I'm just gonna let him come out, because I really need that extra life. Ah! Uh, damn it. If I die here, I'm gonna do another game. I mean, I'm gonna, tr I mean, I'm gonna try one more time. Damn it, I should have just, whatever. I first played Pac-Man around 2010 or 2011, because... Um, the very first pack version of Pac-Man that I ever got was the, uh, the plug-and-play version on the Jack Specific plug-and-plays from the 2000s. Specifically, the one that I played specifically was, uh, the, uh, the one on the 2008 Retro Arcade featuring Pac-Man. Um, that one was the one with 12 games on it, and it was really cool. I don't have, like, I don't have mine anymore because, like, it's, it didn't, it started not working properly for some reason. And I guess, and then we just lost it when, when we moved to my current house. So, like, yeah, but, and it kind of sucks because nowadays those things fetch a really high price on uh, eBay. Like, the lowest price I saw for one of them was like $100. $100 for a plug and play from 2008. So, I guess they didn't really sell that many, which is probably why that. The price is so high, but but that's okay because in recent years I've picked up the uh, Wireless Ms. Pac-Man Collection plug and play and the Arcade Gold featuring Pac-Man plug and play, which both combined together have the exact same number of games as the the Retro Arcade one that I had when I was a kid. And apparently the ret I learned in recent years that the Retro Arcade version of the games actually have a few bugs that aren't in the older plug and plays so uh yeah that's uh that's interesting so i definitely made the right choice in getting these new ones 
but I'll still remember the old one that I used to play with. So many good memories playing games like Bostonian, Zebius, Galaxian, Dig Dug, Galaga, Pac-Man, Pac-Man Pac Pal, Pac-Man Plus, Super Pac-Man, and a bunch of others. Well, I think that should be enough. Well, yeah, I, I guess uh, I guess that's all you needed to see there. But but yeah, that was a very very good, very well made port of Pac-Man. Amazing graphics, amazing sounds, and the gameplay is just as top notch as the arcade version. But so uh, yeah. The Neo Geo Pocket is a really underrated system and had a lot of great games. So maybe I should take a look at more in the future, in future episodes, because there are many good ones to play. But anyways, yeah, happy birthday, Pac-Man. Keep chomping on. It's been a great 40 years, and let's hope for another 40 more. Waka waka. So, and... Yeah, and you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Andrew Reviews, this 40th birthday special for Pac-Man, and I hope you're doing well and staying safe, and I highly encourage you guys to play a little Pac-Man today in honor of this gaming icon, as I will continue to do the same after this video is over. So, until next time, I am your old pal Andrew Ambrose, and I'll... Catch you later.